previously on NC Held Icon. But the, the the thing about you wanting to be a scientist before you went to do medicine, what was use? Yeah. Which rule to use? Yeah. That's all there is to it. It's yeah. still like that even today. Yeah. Remember the rules, which rule are you to use? And that's that. Mm -hmm. And that's yet all. it is a subject that most kids of today are very scared of. The rules, which rule are you to use? And that's that. Mm -hmm. And That's yet all. it is a subject that most kids of today are very scared of. No, one thing, I loved being a doctor. Yes. And I knew being a doctor is not a profession. Mm. And that's why I think medical aid are, are, are using us up. We, it's not a, we shouldn't belong to a union at all. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's a calling. Yes. I still believe it's a calling and I, I, I was happy to be a doctor. Yes. Um, but I wanted my family to do well. Yes. That's the second thing. I, I loved being a doctor. I wanted my family to do well. So when I did internship <clears throat> and I managed to go home uh, and my father asked me when I was an intern, what you are doing next year? I said, I'm going to work in Artridgeville. I'd already organized a place to stay and the rooms to practice. Uh, and, and I was going to work there. Mm. No, yeah. no, just, just there, Prof. So you're telling me that after you qualified and you did your internship and when you did your housemanship. I was doing internship. Uh, yeah, when you were doing internship, you were actually planning. To be a GP. To be a GP. Yes, for five years. And you didn't just think about that, there were plans in place. That's right. You had identified the place being Atridgeville. Yes, right. And you had already got, you know, premises uh, yes. offered to you by the person who was the leader of the township at the that's, time. That's right. And then what happened, Prof? Then, the night before I went back to Deb and my, my we had dinner with my father, with the family, the whole family. Then we talked about other things, and always before we went to sleep at night, one of us would pray and we'd go to sleep. And before that, he asked me, what are you doing next year? Yeah. Uh, that would mean in 1963, what, yeah. what am I doing yeah. next? I said, I'll be working, practicing in Atridgeville, yeah. Pretoria. Uh, and he said, is the medical school for black people in Atridgeville? I said, no. You see? Yeah. Then the prayer town time came. It was the longest I've ever had him give. Mm. But the core of it was praying for me, praying for God to correct me because I was satanic. Mm. All I think of life is money. Mm. And I don't think of things of value of the world and so on. It, 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 when, I, when he finished there... That I, was a heavy I, prayer. Yes. When he finished there, I saw myself as a heathen, uh, as a person who just loves money. Yeah. So when I got, And I mean, you, you had a plan yes. that uh, you are just going to practice in private practice for five years just to get a, a, you know, some money, invest, uh, yeah. invest some money, then go and specialize. But he mm -hmm. didn't see that. No. He wanted you because, to go straight to, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to study further. Because investment is making money. And he didn't think it should be the main thing in, a, in, in his son's mind to make money. He didn't think that way. Anyway, what he did is that when I went back, and this was the second part of 62, 1962. It was still in, in July. The very f first working day, I went to the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And I knocked at the door of the late Professor Derek Crichton. And he says, what can I do for you with his blue eyes? Almost threatening. Yeah. I said, sir, I want a registrar job. You want to train? A train as an obstetrician, a gynecologist. You see, I got the highest mark in obstetrics and gynae. Yes. That the, is in, the, your final, the, the, in your final exam. Yes, the, the second was, was surgery. I mean, we were writing three major subjects. You see, pediatrics was part of medicine then. Yeah. So the second was surgery. There were good passes, both of them. Yeah. But I did well. In fact, 
I think they should have given me a distinction in, in, in obstetrics and gynae, but they didn't. And so you yeah. went to this guy's office to yeah. say, I want to specialize in, o in ONG and yes. uh, I'm looking for a register post. That's right. Then he said, wait, they right at the door, half open. He went to open a key, uh, uh, cupboard and he looked at the results. He says, oh, you're a bright boy. You got a job. I've given you a job. Mm. So he wrote the name Easy down. like that. Yeah, easy like that. Uh, and uh, so come 63, I started working in ONG. Yes. As a senior house surgeon, then I became a registrar. Mm. And uh, the rest is, is history so now. So at that time in South Africa, was there a black, uh, and I'm saying black in the broader sense, you know, was there any black, a gynecologist, you know, whether it's African or Indian or colored at the time. Yeah, they, they was, they was uh, Ibrahim Sidat, but he had trained in Britain. Okay. Uh, he, was, he was a very known, he had just qualified when I started, uh, uh, qualified in Ireland, I think he did, yeah. uh, Ibrahim Sidat. And uh, it's, it's the only one I knew, but there wasn't, if you mean black, you mean yeah. African. African. At that time when I started, there was, a few years later, mm. we had uh, Mpatele, yeah. uh, but he also trained in Britain. Yeah. All right. So, um, so you were taken in as a registrar, was it four years training? No, it's long. Man. <laughs> Five years is minimum. Yeah. And the, the first year you are supposed to do it outside your speciality. Yeah. And I didn't. And I paid later for that. And it's one year outside your specialty and five years then. It's become shorter now. Mm. But it was long to so do. So it was all. almost six years. It was six years. After almost. you've had ah. your six-year undergrad yes. plus internship. Right. So I, I went straight. Uh, and in 1965, I passed the diploma in obstetrics and gynecology. Mm. That qualified me to be a, a junior lecturer in yeah. the university. And that's when I got appointed as a junior lecturer. That's why I taught, I taught old man G. G. Mbeche yes. in his last yes. year before he wrote. Yeah. It was my first class of final years I taught. <laughs> it was in 1965. I remember him at your 80th birthday party. That's because right. he's one of the people who spoke there. That's with right. With a lot of tzotzital, yeah. you know, when, when he talks. Oh, uh, we're, we're still great friends. We're still following each other now, uh, G. G. Mbeche. So, in 65, I did that, and when I've, I've passed there, the examiners called me after the exam. They said, why, did you, why didn't you write the fellowship now? I said, sir, I haven't got enough years to write the fellowship. Mm. You see, they thought my knowledge then was superior was, to somebody who just was a, doing a diploma, diploma in obstetrics and gynecology. Um, but it, it encouraged me even more, mm. because I knew you see, those fellows came from obstetrics and gynecology in South Africa. Mm. So you get known. Uh, yes, then, this then, hot you, one day. Yes. And we get known. I mean, there was in Pretoria, Willy van Nike. There was me in Deben. There was Son and Dega in, 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 he was also in Pretoria. Uh, uh, though he would then went to Vezaf. So the university, we used to know each other, saying so, it's the same, uh, so on. So yeah. I was the fellow from Deben. And, yeah. and, and, and we are the same era. This reminds me, uh, Son and Decker has just passed away. Oh. Yeah. So but Vili, Vili passed away some time. Vili Fanike, he actually became a minister of health uh, during the old uh, government yeah. for, for a while. Yeah. But he was a brilliant postgraduate fellow. Yeah. That. So you then, you know, proceeded beyond your diploma uh, in, in, in ONG and then obtained your fellowship. When yeah. did you obtain your fellowship? In May, that is now the real, yeah, you know, specialist qualification. May, May 1967. Yeah. So uh, were you writing um, as a fellow within the South African environment or UK or No, I, I did the South African. South design. African. So you were admitted mm. into the fellow uh, of, the college of, of the College of ONG oh, Specialists. Yeah. Yeah, then it was, you know, the college was one. See, yeah. now they've made it several colleges. Yes. It was a fellow of the College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. It was a college. Yes. Obstetrics and in the fellowship. Yes. But now it's a fellow of fellowship of obstetrics and gynecology. Yeah. 
Okay. They've, they've changed them a bit. And my understanding, uh, Prof, um, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, you were the first black African and you were the first black... Black anything, uh, fellow. You know, to be a fellow of, the, of you know, uh, you know, ONG yes, in, uh, this in South Africa. Yes. Now, that's big, Prof. Well, you know, uh, what did it mean to you to, uh, to achieve that feat? Well, I, I really have never looked back at it, you know, yeah. because... Just, just then, one of then, your then, then I was ambitious. Yes. You see, I wanted to go up the academic ladder in obstetrics. Now, I was no more, you know, I mean, my father had, had killed all the ideas of, of, of making, making money. money. Yeah, I wanted to... <laughs> I thought I owed him that. Yeah. I owed him that. So I, I was looking forward to going up the ladder, which um, Derek Crichton gave me. I mean, soon after passing the fellowship, I became senior lecturer. Yeah. Um, and when he was removed, I was a senior lecturer. Uh, and, and then I became uh, deputy head of the department yeah. later. Now, just... So you got your fellowship in May 1967. Yes. Right? And this is uh, just about four months before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in September 1967. <laughs> you know? So when I was born, you were already uh, a fully-fledged gynecologist. Yes. All right? But you then, you know, as a senior lecturer within the ONG department, and you now became a deputy, um, you didn't end there. You continued studying, Prof. Yes. Uh, studying towards a, a doctoral degree, uh, you know, at the University of Natal, a PhD. Mm, yes. All right. Just tell us, uh, what was the motivation there? Is it still to, to go up the ladder yes. within the academic sector? You see, what happened is that, you see, you've got to look how the ladder was. You see, you, you qualified. Then you must get positions in the institution. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm to be able to be influential in what you are doing. So when I, I, I in, in 1970, uh, I became um, senior specialist. Yes. Um, in fact, before then, in fact, as soon as I got the diploma, Derek Crichton made me in charge of staff. Yeah. And in 67, he made me in charge of the obstetric. And the obstetrics was the largest in the Southern Hemisphere, mm. just the obstetrics. And he wanted me to be in charge. Of it. That, that gave you a lot of responsibility. It mm. really did. Mm. Yeah. But to, be, to hold this position that you are senior, choose, you must have letters to beg it. Yes. So I obviously, I mean, I was doing some research at mm. the time, and as you will see later, there, yeah. I did some research even at that time. Yes. And, and uh, I worked to, to watch. I always was looking to having a PhD. Yeah. Anyway, in our era, you couldn't be head of a department in, in medical school without a PhD or without a, doing one about to complete. Yeah. Well, we, I think at some point that thing you know, disappeared a little uh, bit. Well, it is back now. It better remain back mm. because it, it, it has a lot to do with quality. Mm. You couldn't in our day. They wouldn't shortlist you. They just threw you off. Mm. If you weren't doing one and there was evidence you were doing one mm. and already advanced, they wouldn't, con they wouldn't at all look at you. Mm. And then in 1980, you obtained uh, you know, this uh, MD uh, yeah. or PhD. Yes. But before then, before then, Prof, there are a number of guys who came after you. Professor Marivate, uh, yes. You know, um, uh, Dr. Pizwe, uh, yes. Dr. Shweni, yes. uh, and, and many other contemporaries. Can you just talk to us? Because it sounds like uh, during that time, uh, you know, in the 70s, you know, uh, Natal, King Edward, had some of the best uh, black gynecologists, you well, know. It, uh, definite, that, it definitely did. Um, Martin Marvat was the very second one yes. to be a fellow. Yes. And the third one, if you take black, was, was S.B. Pizwe. Yeah. 
Yes. So the first three black fe fellows of the College of Obstetrician and Gynecology came from the Natal Medical School, and they were this, these three friends of mine. Yeah. They used to call us three musketeers. We yes. ran that department very yeah. well, the three of us. Yeah. Uh, Shweni was a bit younger, yeah. but he was a bright chap, uh, Michael Shweni. In fact, I was so fond of Michael Shweni that, you know, I would have liked him to have taken over from me in Medun if it was yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah. I have great respect for Michael Shweni. Yeah. Um, but uh, for some reason, he didn't take it. Uh, but doesn't lower my respect for him. Yes, he had yes. very many great qualities. Yes. And, and, and a great fellow you could now, trust. As students who came in in the 80s, exposed to all of these legends, uh, you know, Prof. Marivate, who had his interest uh, very much around uh, twins, you know, you know, twin pregnancies. Yeah, it was. It was um, it, you know, he was the most advanced fellow in that thing. Yes, and 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 uh, uh, Doctor Pizzo now I can't remember what he was his area Dr. of interest. Doctor Pizzo was in uh, uh, bleedings. Yes, in obst obstetrics oh, and yes, gynecology. Yes, yes, yes. Now, yeah. so. <clears throat> You know, the camaraderie, was there competition amongst yourselves, or, you know, but constructive competition it in was, terms of academic performance, research, and things like that? There was no doubt there was uh, constructive competition. Mm. We were always like this. We came about, we were about the same age, mm. so we competed quite a lot. Mm. And I think this is what built us. I mean, each one wanted to better the other one. Yes, 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 yes. And so you continued, did you continue to just become the deputy of the department or did you get uh, other responsibilities? Uh, I think you mentioned something about dean of students at some, at some point. Yes, I was, when I was our senior lecturer, they, I, I was appointed the very first dean of students in Natal University. And what did that entail? Well, looking after the problems of students generally. Mm. Uh, sometimes, not so frequently, would be even political, but mainly it was the, the needy students. Yeah. Uh, many of them would come. You remember they stayed out at Allen Taylor yes. and they needed, you needed to have money in the pocket. Yes. And I became very quickly, I knew what were places to, to touch. Anglo-American was one of them, the round table. I used to phone these people and I used to beg and I used to get money. Yeah, I became, to support these students. Yeah, I became very good at it and I could get money out of them. Um, and I, when I was free, I'd spend time looking at philanthropic organizations yeah. and get used to them, tell them who I am, what I do need from time to time. Yeah. And people responded very well. Mm. So a number of doctors today, even older doctors, actually, you know, were beneficiaries of your efforts. Oh, they were. They were. Some of them still remember how they used to, they tell me how they used to like, they don't even have a cent when they had cent, and I would always make sure they got some money somehow. Yeah. And that used to happen, you know. It, it's unbelievable how South Africans are philanthropic. Yeah. If you really get to them and you give them the problem, South Africans are very ph philanthropic. They give you the money. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There came a time, and, and, I, and I want you to, to help me here, where there was a grand scheme then, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, on making Natal Medical School to be a white medical school, mm. uh, Deben Westville to be an Indian medical school, uh, Western Cape to become a colored medical school, and then Medusa would be for Africans. Am, yes. am I right about yes, that? It's at, it's at the birth of Medusa. Yes. Uh, when, when they thought of Medusa, these things all came up. Yes. But they were viciously opposed. Yes. They, they were viciously opposed. When I took to go to Medusa, the idea of Natal going to be close to others was off the, the records. Of because them. there was a long strike of many months by yes, students yes. opposing that. That's right. Mm. It, 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 was, it was off the, the, the what you call. But they really had planned it. Mm. It wasn't a joke. Mm. That was planned. But it didn't really take place. And they, when I left, they had agreed that they will not stop taking black people in Natal. Yeah. 
And that was agreed upon. Mm. That was one of the f features that people fought yeah. me about. Yeah. But they'd agreed by the time yeah. I left. Well, I'm told that the whole idea came from the constituency of the National Party then, or DP, I don't know what it mm. was, who were saying of the four provinces then, Natal was the only province that did not have a medical school for white students. Yes. Uh, because there were medical schools in the Cape. Yes. Uh, two in Cape Town. There were medical schools in, in Transvaal, of which Pretoria, Vets, you know. And then in the Free State, you had uh, your office. But mm. Natal, there was nothing. And so the constituency in Natal were saying, why do we have to send our kids to other provinces for them to study to be you know, uh, uh, doctors? Yes, I definitely was. I mean, I mean, one of the weakest things about South Africa is the color thinking that we have and, and this type of thing. Um, it, it's surprising mm. that that thing failed because mm. it, it really was, the Natal voice was very, very strong then, mm. that it should become a white medical school. Yes. All right. So... At what point then do you st did you start to entertain a possibility of leaving Natal uh, and, and, and show an interest uh, in taking up the principalship or vice chancellorship uh, of Medunsa at that time of uh, you know, a lot of debates and everything around uh, this grand scheme and everything? You see, it goes to the true history yes. of how... Med, uh, Medunsa started. Yes, I would love it, to it, know that. It wasn't basically the Africana government that started it. Yes. Okay, let's, yes. yes. Leading uh, educationists, Professor Tlingo, the late Professor Tlingo was one of them, who were in advisory committee to Bantu education, mm. had gone had met, yes, and they were aware that less than 20 black doctors were produced a year. Yes, from Natal. For, from from Nat the whole country, whole total. Yeah. You see, what happened in Natal, let me give you Natal's background. Yeah. When it started, as I tell you, it was a medical school for natives. Mm. When it started, classes were about five non-Africans. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, so it was in our, my class. Mm. The class where Maribatu was, which was two classes behind me, yeah. they were already 50 50. Yes. That's 50 uh, Africans and, and 50, 50 non Africans. Yes, that is uh, Indian and color. Yes. yes. Thereafter, it, it, there were less and less Africans. Yes. And this group is, is, is all men who taught me a lot this great. African education is that politicians have never respected. Yeah. They were great people. They realized, they saw this happen, and they realized they would never meet the doctor needs in the country. Yes. They then went to Natal University and saw, it was an easy Gordon. Is this fellow who followed easy Gordon? I'll remember him. Why do I forget John Saini? Yeah. He was the dean. Yes. This fellow said traveled all the way from the Transvaal. And they got to the medical school. This fellow gave them five minutes. They'd come to ask, can't you increase the quota yes. of intake of a, a school that was primarily built for us, they said. Yeah. And this fellow said, you can't teach a graduate from Bantu education medicine. Mm. This See, is years later. That, that stage, I mean, yeah. that, we're talking about uh, 74, 73, 74, that's late. Mm. We've been producing doctors from, from Bantu education. From, 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 yeah, yes, from 1951. We were producing doctors from Bantu education, and this fellow gave them five minutes. And said, you can't, you go and talk to government. On next week's episode next on week's SA episode. Health Icon. And they went to see Minister of Education and of Bantu Education and Development and say, look, we want to head and, 
and, and granted this and said this must happen. Yeah, because all right, they can't go to the other medical. That was wrong. Yes. That I fault. Yes. Yeah. And so this is how it came about. Mm. So 